Kubor Nagashlem to Nongsan Hima. The State Disaster Management Authority ne kasngi kalapanong ye kajing ay jing hikay. Kumno ba niya da? Lada wan ujumai ba lada tuak ndo ba kiwek kiwek kajing jia na kabor mariang. Haga ni kajing ay jing hikay lawan ba ni shimanta di ki opisar na kitinat pa pero pher kum ke SDME kabor district katinat PWD na kaliang tinat pulit ki CRPF Air Force ba kiwek kiwek. Haga ni kasi la yoro ya ka presentation na katinat SDME ka East Kasi Hills District ka PWD ba ka NDRF. Nakaliang Sanjay Goyal ba umarch gen Sudhir Bal, NDMA New Delhi kila buat jengkeli yang kini kita nak dah kebaong. Kan mentoi you ban I presentation lada kipat ba Kim Yo Alat ban pen, bat ban penterai kam yang kini kijing I jingmut. Kila I jingmut ban kini kita nak kide ban ya terilang ban kiriu shiman ni kini 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 kenhon. Haba ya deh ban jing penkreat lada one ujumai ban kiwei kiwei kijing jah nak kebor mariang. Haba I jingkren Sanjay Goyal IAS ulang. Mengisa aga jela ke balak man ketak bha ke jingling shop ke mei mariang pat nak ketak kadau hap anong ki bala pen kreat nak mentah ki la jing yada na ujumai. Ugo ya lula kenturu iki brio bagian persyang iki la jing pen kreat ban yada ya la dia. Day after tomorrow on the 12th is basically to check our preparedness as far as disasters are concerned. Friends as you know we are lying in a region the entire state which is very sensitive and very vulnerable as far as the seismological events are concerned. So that's why our prime focus apart from other disasters have always been our preparedness towards the eventuality of any earthquake. All of us are aware and uh, we keep on observing it. I think at least uh, in a year, not less than four or five times the, the smaller ones and slightly bigger ones, I think one of it happened just a few weeks back, I think around two weeks back, uh, where the epicenter was uh, just on the borders of uh, uh, Assam and another one, the epicenter was in Resu. So we need to understand the, the gravity of this situation and at the same time, find ourselves that where are we as far as the preparedness and our response to this eventuality is concerned. So I will urge upon you to kindly take this exercise uh, very seriously and see that where are we standing at present. As I understand it is not about finding any fault so please don't uh, take it that uh, we are uh, we are now uh, in a, we are now assessing your faults no. We are assessing the preparedness and as a whole, as a state, how do we respond? All the districts are also connected today online and they will be also benefiting from this discussion to, uh, here and they will be doing their own exercises in their respective district headquarters after we finish this uh, initial uh, presentations and all. So without uh, taking much time, I once again welcome each and every one of you and uh, Major Saab has already in detail has has laid out uh, certain points and certain interventions which are expected from all of us. Such great enthusiasm and passion in the conduct of a tabletop exercise preceding a proper mock exercise. I wish to compliment you, Sanjay Goetza, for uh, uh, creating the right leadership, giving the right leadership here, and being able to create that environment is very palpable to me Sitting far away, I can see the environment inside that hall. It is nothing less than the environment you normally see in the Vigyanra, in Delhi. Having said that, let me also reiterate that uh, I am extremely regretful that I am not there in person. I was to be there. Unfortunately, uh, the happenings, uh, the unfortunate disaster in Sikkim has also kept me away attending many meetings which are all in Delhi. Also some personal issues had come up. Uh, so I could not attend in person, otherwise I was going to be there for a good part of five days in your very, very beautiful state. So I will only restrict myself to a few remarks, but it's important that you hear clearly what I have to say. You see, uh, Meghalaya is a uh, very much a part of the Himalayan belt and we are facing some severe challenges in the Himalayan belt 
for the last couple of years and this year in particular. We have had a ma some major problems in Himachal Pradesh. We have had major issues in Uttarakhand. And now you've seen what's happened in Sikkim. We are fortunate that in Meghalaya we don't have the kind of a threat uh, from uh, glacial lake outbursts. But you are absolutely vulnerable to almost every other domain of disaster. So you can also gauge the fact how the world is looking at disasters. Uh, climate change in, in general, how if you have noted, if you have been following G20, you would have realized how much importance the G20 process has given to disaster management and climate change. We in NDMA conducted almost three major meetings of the G20 in uh, Gandhi Nagar and Mumbai and plus uh, Chennai to sensitize the 20 countries, almost a couple of thousand delegates on the importance of including the disaster risk resilience as a part of the G20 process. And it was also included in the final communique which was issued in Delhi. Now what is even more heartening for me at the moment while looking at you in the hall is that there are a very large number of uh, stakeholders who are sitting there in the hall. There are people with different colors of uniform. Every color of uniform plays an important role here. Let me wish to assure you this. Second thing is, you have to remember this as a lesson for your life. There are only two domains where you find that, that uh, all of government approach has to be brought into practice. The first domain is war. In conflict and war, every single, every single player plays some role or the other. The other is disaster management. When disaster strikes, everyone has to put his head to it, put his hands together to make sure that the effort is strong enough to overcome. You see what is happening in Sikkim today. Almost every single service, every single agency, organization is involved in, in bringing about some kind of relief in terms of response. But the disasters have to be prepared for. You have to ensure that you mitigate, reduce the effects of disaster. Respond. Your response is only a secondary part. But when you respond, you have to be so well prepared for response that you can overcome the problems immediately, as early as possible. If you, if you make use of these technologies in time, you will be able to give warnings to people to prevent casualties taking place, prevent your, your livelihoods being, being upset in any great way. So the first start point of this entire thing is knowledge. And that knowledge comes in here in the tabletop exercise. The mock exercise that follows bringing, brings about the response part of it and the preparedness also. But here it is the knowledge which is most, most, most important. A problem, a domain such as an earthquake, which is what Meghalaya is very prone to, or a disaster, a, 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 any disaster in the earthquake field, can sort of upset your entire structure, your complete command and control. I wish to highlight to you the example of what happened in Jammu and Kashmir in the year 2014 when you had the disastrous floods. The flood waters affected every single government slope, as a result of which the government was paralyzed and no one could respond. Because all the areas where the government lived, where the government servants lived, where the government facilities were, were in the lower areas or underwater. Now when the earthquake strikes any place, any place, you will find that you are not, uh, you are as vulnerable as government servants, you are as vulnerable. As civil society organizations, you are as vulnerable. Your families will be affected, your homes will be affected. And despite that, you have to respond. So unless you have rehearsed, unless you have thought about it, unless you have a system in place, Unless you have the entire incident response system working, these, these procedures will not work. As uh, IDRN is concerned, India Disaster Resource Network status report 
uh, the updated records uh, from January to October till date is 2,848 numbers. Then for warning system, uh, sir, we are implementing the NICAP system of the NDMA. And we have the ZASA headline number 1070 at the state EOC, 1077 at the district. And now we have a new uh, uh, project called ERSS, that is uh, 112, an emergency number. Again, the scheme is from NDMA. Uh, another scheme that we have uh, in the state is National Disaster uh, Management uh, Service. Of course, uh, this again it was a scheme of uh, NDMA, but it has been taken over by the state. Uh, we have now in the, the state emergency operation center and three DOCs that is in West Gentia Hills, West Garden Hills, and East Garden Hills district. Then for communications, uh, we are still using the uh, civil defense and home guards network and uh, the NPR network. And this will be the response mechanism. We have identified the role of the different department and responsibility for responding to various disasters has been assigned and fixed with the concerned department. Additional support in the district, we have the volunteers, the NCC, the NSS, the NYK, of the Mitra, we have the Indian Red Cross Society, NGOs, the Paris Scouting Guides, Locality Health, as well as the community. We also have the additional support of SDRF. Besides uh, the armed forces available in the district, NDRF though we don't have in the district, and we also have the technical agency, NISAT, IMD, and uh, the Central Seismological Observatory, Jisai and Lahai. For the protocol to uh, call the uh, NDRF as well as the other paramilitary forces, the DC will write to the SDMA as well as the state government for that purpose. So, so these quickly, I'll just go into the uh, emergency support function. These are the roles of the different department. We have to identify different uh, team leader for various function for coordination. It is the deputy commissioner supported by the different agency, different department. For communication, we have SPMPRO. And for emergency and helpline warning, we have the assistant director IPR supported by the different agency. For search and rescue, we have the SP, police, fire emergency service, and deputy controller, supported by the other agency. Evacuation by the deputy controller, civil defense. Relief by the ADC relief. Food, and food supply by the ADC relief. Shelter, ar uh, shelter arrangement by the ADC disaster management uh, CEO. The emergency medical response by the DMNHO. These will be supported by the different agencies that we have in the district, the various line department. For water and electricity, we have the EE, PHE, and MECL. For debris clearance, CEO, Shillong Municipal Board. For law and order, the ADC uh, law and order, as well as for damage assessment. These so we have identified to the different team leader, as I've said, and the different supporting agency. Using the space technology and also using the ground uh, data. We have also identified where are the incident zones, if it happens in a built up area. We have identified also where are the open spaces especially for uh, uh, re, uh, the uh, places where people can be kept at a time of emergencies. We have identified the services like the uh, fire stations and also the health services where as centers and using the GIS platform we have identified what will be the shortest way and the shortest route at what time to move the services to the incident zone and to move the uh, people which are injured or otherwise to move back to the services especially the health centers. This is the exercise which we have done for the city disaster management plan for the whole of Greater Shillong, and we have put it up also. So we have identified even what are the areas. Each and every building has been mapped using the high special resolution satellite data which we have put up and what are the service area, which are the routes, what is the length, what will be the time taken, all such type of information can be used during the time of Rescue and evacuation. Thank you. It can be. It, it can be. You must do it. Okay. That is the aim of doing this. Yes. All right. Yes. Then also this information sir, must be in the SEOC, where you are. Because what will happen during an earthquake? The first casualty is going to be your communication to internet. Yes. So even though we may put it on the net, very few people will be able to access it. Only those who are having satellite-based. Uh, 
access to the internet, they'll, they'll only be able to access it, right? So it's important to have this in your DOC and use it as a decision support system. Secondly, you mentioned you planned, uh, done your building, uh, you know, mapping, etc. Have you done a survey of these buildings? Uh, which buildings are earthquake proof, which are likely to collapse? Yeah, we have not done so. Then there's no point of doing this uh, building mapping. Because that has already been done in the hazardous vulnerability exercise. And also, you have to, you have to, uh, you have to combine the two, right? So in, in a particular area, the moment you zoom into it, you should have a, uh, a precise information, okay, so many buildings with so many inhabitants are likely to suffer major damage during earthquake. So many buildings, medium damage. So many during minor damage. So what will, what will this help you? This will give you a figure as to how many people are likely to be homeless in case, God forbid, a major earthquake strikes and Shillong is affected. How many people are likely to get injured? And your disaster management plan is not what you have given. It has what is the impact of, an, uh, uh, of a disaster in terms of this? Homeless, injured, etc. What are the resources you have to uh, provide them relief in terms of search and rescue and relief, uh, other uh, food, uh, shelter, etc. What are the resources you have to provide them? Medical assistance. If in case the number is 10,000 people injured, I'm just giving a number, <laughs> estimated. Do you have capacity to treat 10,000 people? Do you have the required number of ambulances? If not, what are you doing to you know, take care of the excess uh, overrun which your capacity cannot handle? So all this information is very good. It must be translated into what is the, going to be the impact in terms of figures. And your plan must be in terms of how you're going to you know, use your resources. So also, this is my point to your, uh, uh, the lady who was presenting for you. You know, when you give your resources, madam, you don't write, I have volunteers from NCC, NYKS, etc. How many volunteers? It's the figures that, you know, are important. Just writing the agencies are not there. So, okay, you have so many volunteers. You have so many people from SDRF available at uh, in your district. You have so many Abda Mitras available in your district. So, this is the pool you can bank on. You spoke of uh, the Air Force, but you did not speak of the Army. You did not speak of the CRPF. You did not speak of the other uh, uniformed services. They are all sitting here. They all have major resources they can provide you to assist you. So please layers with them. Please, they will tell you, okay, I can provide you three columns. Each column of 75 people with so many vehicles, earth, earth moving equipment, so many uh, medical teams. Then uh, we have also constituted the, for the institutional arrangements only within the department for uh, disaster related uh, management, especially during, uh, especially related to a disaster, in the event of a disaster. We have a state owner officer who is the Joint Secretary, assisted by the SAP and his circle. And we also have model officers uh, for the all the districts. We have to uh, support and uh, consult in consultation with the District Disaster Management Authority. They have to consult and uh, respective roles. We also have the task force at all the uh, district levels or divisional levels. And they are all headed by the executive engineers. And uh, they have members, the assistant engineers, all the officers under the extra engineers are all four, all four under the task force. And their job is basically to uh, assist the district manager, district management, and district authority, especially in the event of an earthquake. Uh, we have uh, uh, major, several major uh, disasters and hazards, especially in the state. And the number one of those is uh, earthquake, as we all will understand. Earthquake of 1897 is the benchmark, as we all know, of the earthquake intensity and magnitude, not only in our state, but also in the country as well. So, uh, the philosophy of the department is to, is to uh, prevent risk and mitigation. That's the main philosophy of the department. That's why we strive very hard to make our infrastructures, especially roads, buildings and bridges, that are designed and constructed, incorporating all the necessary relevant uh, guidelines and standard codes or ISC codes or whatever codes that are available so that our structures 
are disaster resilient. And also we undertake, uh, we also are trying to undertake uh, the seismic stability analysis of especially the pipeline buildings and other structures and bridges as well, so that we, have, we can understand how safe they are and if required, the uh, retrofitting of those structures can be undertaken in a phase-wise manner. So we also are taking replacement of uh, uh, semi-permanent timber bridges with permanent ones. We have uh, quite a lot of uh, so those uh, timber bridges. So we're trying to replace them with permanent RCC bridges in a phase-wise manner. And so we go a long way in mitigating the effects of hazard. And uh, we also do uh, uh, have, we have, we do have to include uh, uh, but a good road, uh, yeah, a good road networks in the state amounting to approximately 11,000 kilometers. That uh, um, uh, that amounts to approximately 0.5 kilometer per square kilometer of the area of the state. And we have connect connected almost uh, all the important inhabitants, except where areas where there is not accessible to, uh, I mean less accessible areas. There, there are difficult terrains. They were able to connect. Uh, I will not uh, take much of the time in the introduction of NDR. We are a multidisciplinary, multi skilled, high tech, specialized force. We are trained and equipped at the international level. International standards are for operating any kind of natural as well as environment disasters uh, in India as well as abroad. So, this is our disposition. We are, uh, it, NDRF has 16 battalions and they are uh, deployed in different parts of India. And uh, this one, our battalion is the first battalion in NDR. We are primarily responsible. Uh, for India, this uh, response in uh, four states that include uh, 20, uh, three districts of Assam and complete Meghalaya, Tripura, and Mizoram. This is uh, uh, this is a multi-skill. Personally, we uh, have we have different type of specializations. Do not we do not only conduct a rescue operation, but we are all our uh, rescuers are uh, trained in medical first response. Then uh, response to the CVR and emergencies, the collapse structure, search and rescue uh, can occur in uh, this is a uh, major follow-up in any earthquake and uh, mountain search and rescue, canine, we have sky canine squad with us, uh, flood water and deep diving. And for this type of, we have multiple type of uh, specialists with us, we have a team of doctors, paramedics, engineers, technicians and then we have uh, uh, specialized uh, trained people from other agencies like deep divers. Then uh, animal disaster management, any, any, uh, do, uh, in any disaster they are lost of uh, animal cat die or uh, they also need uh, some help. So we have a mechanism for the training for this also and we have our uh, batteries set up also. And uh, then again any kind of disaster we are capable of taking uh, care of. And then uh, for mobilization we have an empty fleet and uh, we are self-contained. This is a... Uh, uh, I will not take much of the time. Uh, we uh, in a NDR uh, uh, battalion, there are team is a basic subunit, and we have 18 of them. This is uh, uh, the structure. We, uh, as you can see, that we have SAR team, and in addition to that, we have canine, we have paramedics, we have uh, Adam, we have inge structural engineers with us. So this is our uh, kind of uh, uh, structure of a team. Now I come to the role and responsibilities that we are given. Uh, we are not only responsible for uh, uh, the response that people see us doing, but uh, in uh, uh, we also work in pre-disaster, during disaster and post-disaster phases. In pre-disaster phases, one of the mandate is to keep ourselves trained because uh, what we are, uh, uh, our, uh, we are what our training is. If we are trained, we can uh, perform well, and if we are not trained, we cannot. So when we are not engaged in any kind of disaster response, we are training our people. We are regularly practicing, we are revising our, we are training our people so that they are training, trained, updated and during disaster they can swiftly respond. Then uh, another uh, is the uh, familiarization area responsibility. Uh, we have assigned area of responsibility to all our teams which keep on going to their area and uh, keep them a familiarization of various factors. They go to the districts, they meet the people there. They take their contact numbers and uh, all other information that is required, what all capabilities that have, what all in, uh, inventory that have, they, they have, uh, who, uh, which are uh, uh, these volunteers are available in this district, this all information we gather. And we are mandated to cover all the district within a span of three years that we keep on doing. As, uh, as we are speaking here, we are sitting here, uh, one of our such type of exercises is uh, uh, presently going on in the East uh, Jayantia Hills district, uh, Clarita. Our team is uh, there and they are 
uh, they will be there from 8 to 14 for a week and they will conduct this uh, foundation exercise. They are, they are present there now. Then we do various kind of joint exercises with the stakeholders, with the uh, state departments, with the industries, with the railways, with the air force, with the airports and anyone who wants to conduct that side with us, we uh, really do it.